I love Mexico. I've lived there for nearly two years and had the chance to visit all 32 Mexican states. This April, Cece and I got eight days off work and traveled down to the states of Chiapas, Campeche, and Yucatan to explore one of the best regions of Mexico. Cece had never been to this part of the country, so I was excited to show her the colorful magical towns, amazing ruins, beautiful waterfalls, and of course, delicious comida mexicana of southern Mexico. From Tuxla Gutierrez Airport, we headed straight to Cascada El Chiflon. It was really fun to stay in the cabins located inside the main gate. This meant that we could get out on the trails to explore the waterfalls long before the main gate opens at 8 a.m. Good morning from day one of our Southern Mexico adventure. We are down here in the state of Chiapas in Southern Mexico, down towards the border with Guatemala. El Chiflon, a chain of waterfalls that form in the bed of the San Vicente River, are absolutely spectacular. It should be beautiful here with the turquoise color water as we are in the dry season so the water is even prettier. In total, five waterfalls descend from the steep hills above. The names are El Suspiro, Jala de Angel, Arco Iris, and Quinceañera. The highest one, Vela de Novia, is 120 meters high. It receives this name because its current forms a white layer on the rocks. The intense turquoise color of the pools that form under each waterfall is spectacular. With a three mile round trip hike, in about two hours we explored the entire park without seeing anyone else there the entire time. After Cascada El Chiflon, we drove to the magical town of Comitan. Mexico has over 130 Pueblos Magicos, or magical towns, that are awarded with this designation for maintaining their original architecture, culture, folklore, and history intact, and are beautiful places to feel the warmth of the Mexican culture. Comitan's main plaza is a joy to visit. Colorful signs and archways fill the plaza, along with loads of local vendors selling delicious comida callejera, or street food. By following the saying, donde está lleno, está bueno, or where it's full of people, it's good and safe to eat. Cece and I ate our way through the plaza trying yummy adobada tacos, chalupas, and horchada, and adding a pineapple paleta or popsicles, we walked back to our car down the colorful streets. From Comitan, we drove four and a half hours north to Agua Zoo Waterfalls. While beautiful, these waterfalls are very touristy, with loads of clothing, jewelry, and food vendors lining the short path alongside the waterfalls. About another half hour up the road, we got to Misol Ha. We were the only ones there at this beautiful 120-foot waterfall that drops down into a picturesque round pool surrounded by lush vegetation. Jumping in the water to cool off was the perfect way to end a hot Chiapas afternoon. After a short drive, we were into the magical town of Palenque, ready for some more street food with cochinita pibil, elotes, and a giant one liter mango smoothie. I don't think I have enough. <laughs> the next morning, we were among the first people to enter the world famous ruins of Palenque. This will be fun. This morning we're visiting the archaeological zone of Palenque, one of the most famous Mayan ruins in the entire world. Palenque was a Mayan city-state in southern Mexico that perished in the 8th century. The ruins date back from 220 BC to 800 AD. Late spring is one of the hottest times of the year in southern Mexico, and it was right around 100 degrees for us nearly every day this April. It's warm. It's hot. <laughs> From Palenque, we drove north out of Chiapas and into Campeche State, past many fields where farmers were having, perhaps controlled, perhaps uncontrolled, burns in their fields. Ooh, after driving for about half the day here from Palenque, we've made it to the ruins of Edzana. It is like 100 degrees and humid out here. No shade. <laughs> Nowhere to hide with the sun just beating down on us here in the mid-afternoon. Shade. Just give us a little bit of shade.
After a two hour drive, we made it to the Kaaba ruins, which we had completely to ourselves as the local man let us in, even though it was after visiting hours. He had been living there for 25 years and was happy to let us visit. These ruins were perhaps our favorites. <clears throat> Kaaba is one of the few mine settlements in the area that has retained its original name, meaning the powerful hand. It is second to only Ushmal in the region in size and is a hugely impressive site. It had been a long day driving on Mexican highways, and with hundreds of speed bumps, driving at night is not my idea of a good time. So we asked around in Santa Elena and found some locals who had a couple of rooms they rented out and made our way to the only restaurant open in this tiny town with a local lady making yummy home-cooked dinners. We have made our way down here to the Yucatan and we're going to check out Cenote Can Quiriche. You feel like you're in the middle of nowhere until you walk into the entrance of this beautiful open cenote, which has a stunning view when you walk down into it. The depth of the water ranges from 3 feet to 65 feet deep in the middle. It was perfect being the first people to arrive in the morning so we could enjoy the turquoise blue waters before anyone else got there. Really cool though. Look at this incredible balance. <laughs> After about an hour, more people started joining us and we realized it was time to get a move on. After an hour and a half drive, we made our way to one of my favorite Pueblos Magicos in all of Mexico, Izamal. All of the buildings and homes in Izamal's charming downtown area are painted bright yellow and walking the streets is an absolute joy. After exploring the downtown area and small local ruins, we grabbed a seat at a local restaurant on the main plaza and ordered some delicious tacos and una torta for lunch as we watched life pass by in the main square. <laughs> is it good? From Izamal, we turned west and started heading towards the Caribbean and drove for six more hours until we got to Ciudad del Carmen. We got to Ciudad del Carmen just in time for sunset and found a small family restaurant serving up huge portions of seafood. The mixed seafood rice and garlic shrimp dishes were so big that we could barely finish them. The next morning we were up early to go for a morning run before the temperatures got back to 100 degrees and before another big drive south back into Chiapas. After a seven hour drive, we arrived in the afternoon at Sumidero Canyon National Park to check out the lookouts on the rim of the canyon in the late afternoon. After the lookouts, we headed into Tuxla Gutierrez, found a place to stay, and walked down to the museum in Marimba Park. <laughs> The park was full of people dancing to live music and enjoying the beautiful evening. For dinner, we found a great place that had tlayudas and huaraches. Tlayudas are like a Oaxacan pizza loaded up with all kinds of meat. And huarache, meaning sandal, is a thick shaped dough loaded up with all kinds of meats and veggies as well. The next morning after a sweaty run, we went down to the boat terminal and waited for 16 other people to show up so we could fill a boat and head up into the Sumidero Canyon. El Canyon de Sumidero, or Sumidero Canyon, is a deep natural canyon whose creation began around the same time as the Grand Canyon in the U.S. state of Arizona. The canyon has steep vertical walls which reach as high as 3,300 feet high, and the river water temperature gets up to 90 degrees on hot days. On the boat ride, the driver stopped at various points to point out crocodiles, spider monkeys, caves, and different formations on the canyon walls. <laughs> at the far end of the canyon, of course, being Mexico, 
the boat made the obligatory stop at the floating OXO mini markets, where a couple of local guys sold probably $50 in snacks and drinks in just over five minutes. Be prepared for the heat if you take the Sumadero Canyon tour, as temperatures in the canyon often soar above 100 degrees and there's no shade on the boat to cover you. After the canyon, we drove 15 minutes to the magical town of Chiapa del Corso and did what you do in magical towns, which is walk the main square, explore the market and grab some delicious tacos and horchata and a paleta popsicle for dessert to help fight the heat. It's like gold. We were really excited to drive up 6,000 feet in elevation after a week at 100 degree temperatures <laughs> to visit the town of San Cristobal de las Casas, which will be our final base for the last couple of days of our trip. San Cristobal de las Casas is a town in the central highlands of Chiapas, and it was the capital until 1892. The area is made up of mountainous terrain, but the city sits in a small valley surrounded by beautiful hills. The city's center maintains its Spanish colonial layout and much of its architecture, with red tile roofs, cobblestone streets, and iron balconies often decorated with flowers. Much of the tourism in the region is based on the heavy influence of indigenous people in the area. Many of the local people speak other languages, like Tzotzil, making the town feel much different than cities in the central or northern regions of Mexico. After walking the beautiful streets, we found a tasty plate of mole and a liter of tascalate. Tascalate is a chocolate drink made from a mixture of roasted maize, chocolate, ground pine nuts, vanilla, and sugar, very common in the state of Chiapas. San Cristobal has churches all over the downtown area, and the church of San Cristobalito up on the hill just west of the downtown area gives great views over the no, town. There's just too much going on. Every night when the sun sets, hundreds of local vendors bring out their clothes, accessories, and street food to sell just next to the main square. A tamal, elote, and some freshly made churros were the perfect way to finish off the evening in San Cristobal. The next morning we drove up to the church of San Juan Chamula. Although you can't film in the church, it is really an interesting place. Filled with colorful candles and smoke burning from resin incense, commonly used through southern Mexico. Today was a day full of Mexican food and snacks with more churros, chilaquiles, and a cocoa tour at Cacao Museum. For dinner we grabbed a burrito, and carne asada before walking around the main square and of course getting some more churros to finish off the day. Our last day in San Cristobal started with a morning run past the picturesque churches early in the morning before the traffic hit the cobblestone streets. Then we drove a short distance outside of San Cris to El Arcotete and the Mammoth Caves. El Arcotete is a cool area to visit with caves that hang over a small stream. I like it, it's better than I thought. I know. You can easily hike around for a mile or two and enjoy the fresh air outside of town. With a $1 entrance fee, this one doesn't break the bank either. It's fun. Wow. It's wobbly though. The Mammoth Caves also have a $1 entrance fee and is a fun short stop with an extensive cave to explore and cool temperatures as you enter underground. On our last day in San Cristobal de las Casas and we're checking out some of the things outside of town. Now we are at Grutas de Mamut or the Mammoth Caves. Back in San Cristobal we had some gorditas, which are similar to Colombian arepas and are stuffed with delicious fillings of meat and vegetables. Gorditas. Today's that just cake. So good. <laughs> After a two dollar haircut, it was time for dinner. We had an alambre. Alambres are one of my favorite things to get in Mexico. You're served a generous portion of meat, veggies, and often cheese, grilled together, and you can make as many tacos as you want with your serving of meat. <clears throat> After dinner, we made our way up to the main square again and found a wedding celebration happening. 
When the newly wedded couple emerged from the church, they were greeted with drums and dancing that filled the night air. For dessert, we had churros once again. Last day, we drove to Tuxla Gutierrez Airport early in the morning, turned in our rental car and flew two hours north to Guadalajara to spend our seven hour layover with my longtime friends Josefina and Miguel. It was a joy walking the colorful streets alongside Lake Chapala, the biggest lake in Mexico, in the towns of Chapala and Ajijic. It was really fun to catch up with my good friends, who I hadn't seen in years, and that helped me find a place to live when I used to live in Mexico in the past. Jose, ¿qué tal? Oh, I saw you, Miguel. Mexico is such a beautiful country with colorful towns, towering ruins, amazing nature, and delicious food around every corner. While many people like to visit the popular resorts and beaches in Mexico, however, when you get off the main tourist track, you see that Mexico really has so much variety and so many amazing places to explore. I always love coming back to visit the country where I feel so at home. It's really cool though.